everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. This is uh, Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Maguko. If at all, if at all you're just joining us, uh, you're just in time for, of course, the next part of this conversation. It's all about youth and politics today. I'm with Mesha Kotieno and Kalebi Kenya joining me in studio. We Before we went on that break, we were talking about democracy. And, of course, there is the 44 billion Kenyans are whooping 44.2 billion Kenya shillings that is going to be used for these uh, coming elections. Taxpayers' money is going to be used and of course Kenyans need to know these kind of uh, uh, things and of course be part of this conversation. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ram Maguko at Y254 channel. Do you agree with what Mejak is saying? Do you agree with what Caleb is saying? And of course uh, we shall sample your feedback a bit later on. Um, let's wrap this conversation up. You were saying something before we went on that break. I'll give you time to have a final word in regards to that particular issue before I move to the next story. Caleb. Okay. Uh, so briefly, I will just say this, that uh, this year's election is not expensive. If I compare 2022 elections with the 20, 2017 elections, 2017 elections in the first round, I think it took 40.9 billion. Mm -hmm. And the rerun cost us 12 billion. So it, is more, it was more expensive than what we are perceiving this year. So I, I'm trying, wh what am I trying to say? I'm trying to insist that the election can even be more expensive, but provided there is transparency, there is a clear indication that democracy is in play. And for this year, we have even seen more agencies coming up, you know, you know uh, the corruption effect is, 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 is on play this year and that's why we are seeing more leaders are being subjected to investigation and this is something that also need f financing we also need uh, you know agencies like the uh, the ethics and anti-corruption commission they also need financing to ensure that they curb uh, election mal malpractices uh, in accordance to the elections act of 2011 and this right. is something that is in relation to what we have been talking about. Oh, all right. All Thank right. you. Huh? Uh, 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 I think so quickly, I would love to correct something that is said. In 2017, we did not have a rerun. The Supreme mm -hmm. Court of Kenya said, conduct a fresh. Fresh means a new election, you know, uh, in line with the Constitution and all applicable laws. So we had a repeat election. And that is why that election was so expensive. It is a narrow thinking for somebody to compare a 2017 election and a repeat of it with that which has not been done. This is what I'll say. If we need to make elections expensive as they are right now, they must be verifiable. That means that when my vote is counted, it must be properly recorded and then uh, properly you know, transferred according to constitutional remit and properly announced by a qualified you know you, you know personnel so that if that is not done then the financing goes um into zero the entire process then goes into the dustbin of history and we have to repeat another election with the same cost so the cost of this election is not basically on the financing the cost of it is on the democratic process that it, it has to go through Okay. All right. All right. And of course, this debate, uh, I'm sure it would end today, but uh, we shall visit as you proceed. Uh, the cost of this election, yes, our, uh, 40, over 44.2 billion shilling. Is it worth it? Is it going to help us? We are looking at matters concerning security, uh, you know, um, even when it comes to education, uh, public education, you know, because civic education. Um, uh, uh, Kenyans need to know about this particular process, what you need to look out for. It is one issue that, of course, we shall take a keen interest on. But even as we proceed, uh, let's move on to the next story. Yes, we talk about a two-horse race, but other people are saying, you know what, we have uh, also other contestants who are vying for presidency. The presidential candidates argue that, uh, the, 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 that uh, there is a poll that, uh, you know, uh, came out that, you know what, 
during these particular elections we are going to have a two horse race and of course between Azimio one Kenya leader Raila Odinga and the uh, deputy president William Ruto for the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance so last week these uh, polls were taken and of course despite this we had we have other candidates who have uh, come out and said you know what we are also running we have Safina party presidential candidate Jimmy Wanjigi we have Roots Party uh, presidential candidate Professor George Wajakoya. We have uh, other people like uh, Ruben Kigame who, uh, who uh, is also there. And of course, they have also come up with their different promises. George Wajakoya said, you know what? We know that uh, some aspirants are, are, are thieves. That's what he said. Some aspirants are thieves, liars, or hold fake certificates. We know that some have made us fight and uh, hate each other, but we, prom we, we praise them. We take their money. We vote for them this time let's decide on 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 who is the best let's install a government of values and he's saying that we need to legalize bang <laughs> <laughs> he has been training all this time so let's talk about this we always talk about the one kenya uh, uh as one kenya alliance and the kenya kwanza what about these other people Yes, yeah. we talk about democracy. Yeah. What about these are the people who are vying for presidency that we are not mentioning each and every now and again? I, from my perspective, I think um, democracy has given them the opportunity to present themselves um, as candidates. Uh, where the two horse race uh, kind of uh, you know tag is coming is the kind of numbers that you are able to marshal uh, from you know you know all over the country, mm. and and so that you remain you know the talk of that kind of election and if you see if, if you look at this election that is facing us we obviously have azimio and kenya alliance coalition and 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 uda which is actually so much popular than kenya kwanza unfortunately enough um being the front runners are because of the kind of numbers they are able to marshal countrywide hold on I UDA, mean, uda more popular than kenya kwanza yes according to the poll the tifa poll no uh, uda is part of kenya kwanza yes and it's more popular than kenya kwanza you need to read that um, right. UDA as a party was more popular than the coalition itself. Um, so, so, so I mean, I mean, I mean, just to come back on mm. what I was saying. Mm. So, it is basically because of the numbers that they're mm. able to marshal um, from all over the region, and that is where they remain. You know, a two-horse race. We are not saying the rest are not, but they are not bringing numbers that are able to shake anything, right? And and especially where you have forty-eight. <laughs> presidential aspirants. I mean, that's, 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 that's a very big, big number. Mm. But again, it really comes back to numbers, like we normally say. Mm. So uh, as Emiya One Kenya Alliance and, 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 and uh, you know, KK mm. are able to bring on board a lot yeah. of numbers. All right. Yes. It got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my word will be this. You must qualify to be a horse. But for now, others are calves. <laughs> and the reason as to why I'm saying hey, this that is, is... That is... A, that is a, hey. No, in I, terms I, of, uh, I, you know... I, I, I'm not aspiring to be an asset, to be a president, <laughs> but... <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that, hey. that, uh, yeah, that is my perception of things, because... They are, they ca are, you the, are they the cows that uh, Junan Mohammed was referring to in <laughs> Parliament? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, so, in this one uh, field, I'll uh, concede with my brother Meshak here, that uh, being a horse... In my own perception, being mm. a horse comes with uh, the numbers that you are able to marshal. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't have the numbers, then automatically you don't qualify to, you know, you, if you don't have the numbers, how could you be president? And one very important aspect that you must consider, you may want to become a president. Saying that I want to become a president is so easy. But you must, in the words of Moi, you must, the late President Moi, you must also be able to, to know where am I loved, where do I have numbers, where do I need to concentrate more energy on. Mm. Instead of just telling us that you want to become president, so if we, will, if we, if we elect you to be, to be president, yet your party does not even have, you know, grassroots members, then you go to parliament. Which motion will go through that you have, uh, that you have, conce you have conceptualized? So it, 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 it just comes with uh, the, the numbers that you are able to marshal. That is what qualifies you to be a horse. Otherwise, it's a, uh, let me call it, if Kalonzo decides to get to the race, <laughs> of which it's, it's like he's not that stable, 
we uh, from uh, uh, the other day we hear that uh, he wants to go back to Azimio the other day we hear him unveiling his candidate so it might be a three horse race based on the numbers that we are seeing but not cows <laughs> the other ones <laughs> yeah <laughs> they are yeah. not cows. I, they are, they are not. I, come to you, I have said they are calves. They are horses. That is my perception. No, I'll, I, I'll not. I'll not seek indulgence on that. Because the issue that I'm, I'm looking at here mm -hmm. is, they are people, they are candidates, they are human beings, and they are Kenyans. Mm. They are, is it yeah. fair to refer to them as cows? Is it also fair to call these other two horses? They are also human beings. So in relating this matter to, to a horse, what is the young one of a horse? It's a calf. Therefore, if you, are not ma if, you have, if, if you have no matured numbers, then in relating to a horse, then you are a calf. Thank you. Okay, even with the issues of numbers, the other thing that I wanted to add is we are getting into presidential debates and you'll even realize that the apportioning of those presidential debates uh, is done depending on the numbers that, you know, you're bringing on board. So obviously you will see Ruto and Raila will have their own session and then you'll have the rest having uh -huh. their own session. So that is the entire culmination of a two horse race, the numbers. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. But mm -hmm. there is also something that I wanted to say that is mentioned before we um, finish mm -hmm. about the entrance of Kalonzo into presidential, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, that is not even assured right now. They still have issues with the registrar of political parties and IBC and all that. Mm -hmm. But even though if he comes as Kalonzo, uh, I, I am not certain whether he is still going to be a horse in the race mm -hmm. uh, because he will need a thorough campaign between the remaining time. But again, he will need to prove to us. You know, the approval rating of Kalonzo right now is so low. His attitude towards politics, politics uh, recently has been so demeaning with a lot of inconsistency. This man is the worst inconsistent man, Southern Sahara, north of Limpopo. He did this in 2017. He is even worsened it this year. Who is going to trust Kalonzo with their vote? Because he not, is, not, he not is even exercising his democratic right. You, democracy <laughs> does not say you be inconsistent, right? Uh -huh. And that inconsistency then takes away some of the votes away from him. I mean, oh. even within his Ukambani backyard, I'm so sure there are people who look at that kind of inconsistency and say, this is not a leader worth leading our region. So there is that aspect of if Kalonzo goes for the presidential, you know, um, you know, you know, um, ticket, uh, he might just cause a rerun, right? Uh, which again is not even guaranteed. In now, fact, in this now, election, I don't think we are going to have a rerun. Now, now but, but, but still, let me let, let me let me digress a bit uh, yeah. because we are coming to Kalonzo's side. Yeah. Uh, but um, let's finish the part of the other aspirants that yeah. are vying yeah. because the registrar of political parties are so far clear thirty-eight. Yes. Yes. Vi. Yes. Thirty-eight. Yes. And um, I'm looking at the the, the 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 numbers that these thirty-eight will uh, attract in their different regions. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, we, f we may say uh, uh, they don't have the numbers the way we, we perceive, but it's also a perception of the media, the way we are portraying. Could they also have um, you know, a place in these particular coming elections? They do have a place by the virtue of them presenting themselves for election. Mm -hmm. First of all, that is taken care of. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, these 38 won't even marshal 500,000 votes around the country. Some of them are probably going to get five or ten votes. I mean, this has happened in the past. I, I mm. am drawing, I'm drawing my assumptions from his history. So we, we are not going to see 38, you know, drumming up 500,000 votes. Not, right. not really. All right. Not really, yeah. uh, uh, Ikenye, uh, you can touch on the Kalonzo issue and the 38 okay. uh, uh, people that have been cleared by the uh, RPP. Yeah, let me first begin with Kalonzo. I'll, I'll uh, discourage you. Wanameshak from uh, underrating Mr. Kalonzo. Number one, Kalonzo Mosioka, in as much as he seems inconsistent, he has a very key role to play. 
in the 2022 elections. Mm -hmm. And that is why every single coalition, be it the Azimio One Kenya Alliance, be it the Kenya Kwanzaa, they are trying to woo him to their side because they know that he has an impact to play. Uh, well, he might not have, you know, uh, the numbers to become the president, but I think he has the card. If you have Kalonzo on your side right now, you can be safer. Because remember we have Karua, or oh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a topic of another day. We, 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 you want to open up another <laughs> Yeah. We'll discuss it on, on, on another day, but time is not on our side. I want mm. to give you guys to have a final word in regards to this particular conversation yeah. that you've had today, but I'm giving you 30 seconds each. Uh, let me start with uh, you, Caleb, mm -hmm. and then I'll finish with you, Meshak. Thank you so much. In my parting shot, this is what I'll tell Kenyans. Don't look at the election cost. Try to embrace what is right. And what is right is fighting for a transparent and clear election come 2022. Moreover, elect leaders who have your interests at heart. Don't elect money launders. Don't elect people who, with whom your resources are not going to be secured. Don't elect people with whom the future of your generations will come to cry after. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, to Rambuko and to the media station, thank you so much and continue empowering youths. Let the voices of youths be heard. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Meshak. I think in this election, like any other election, we are called to make the right choices. I'm a student of history and economics. History does not demand that we use a lot to get the right history. We just need to get it right at the voting, um, at the polling station through voting, and we will have restructured our history from a retrogressive kind of nature to a progressive. So this is a call to all the youth, to all the mothers, to all the fathers, to all the women, to every beloved citizen of this country to wake up on uh, the 9th of August and uh, make that key decision that uh, will shift the narrative of our economy uh, the narrative of our leadership and the narrative of our democracy. Thank you so much. That is Masha Kocheno and Kalebi Kenya in this particular conversation on youth and politics. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming and honoring the invitation as Anderson and Ashikuru. And of course, uh, I want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you that uh, has been part of this conversation. Uh, but still, democracy is an issue that uh, as Kenyans we need to uh, talk about because some Kenyans have not yet registered for uh, uh, the coming elections. Do you know that is your democratic right? We still need to talk about democracy. Well, that brings us to the end of this morning conversation right here on youth and politics. We still have much more coming up your way. My name is Ram Aguko. Stay tuned to I in the morning.